What's up, MCS Mahone here with The Up Collective, bringing you the first video in our series titled Helicopter Basics. We're going to define a whole bunch of terminology that helicopter pilots and mechanics use every day so that you'll begin to know what's going on. All of this terminology will be used in future videos, so take notes. And we're back. Helicopters generate lift in the same way airplanes do, with wings. The spinning wings on the top of the helicopter are called the main rotor blades, and each main rotor blade is a tiny wing. Unfortunately, this spinning creates a torque on the helicopter in the opposite direction. This is similar to why you need two hands to open a water bottle. One hand to create a torque in one direction, and the other hand to create a torque in the opposite direction. The helicopter isn't going to be attached to the ground, so we need some way to counteract this force. The most common method of solving this problem is a tail rotor, which is another smaller rotor on the helicopter tail boom. This is called the conventional helicopter design. There are other unconventional ways of solving this problem, but we're not gonna discuss those quite yet. Here's a tiny helicopter. The body of the helicopter is called the fuselage, which has a nose and a tail. The tail is commonly called the tail boom, as it is typically a hollow aluminum tube, and if you hit your head on it, it goes boom. Helicopters can have two, three, four, five, if or more blades. A lot of people ask if the number of rotor blades makes the helicopter faster or lift more. Heavy lift helicopters do tend to have more blades, and the fastest helicopters typically have at least four blades. But the performance of a ship in terms of cruise speed and max gross weight is a complex mix of many factors, including the rotor solidity, the shape of the airframe, the engine power available, and a lot of other factors. So you can't really draw any easy conclusions there. So don't look to the number of rotor blades to mean much more other than more rotor blades tend to be a little bit quieter and also much more expensive to operate. American helicopters have their rotor blades turned counterclockwise when viewed from above. European helicopters are opposite. Engineers tend to use the right hand rule when describing a direction of rotation as it doesn't depend on which direction you're viewing from. It works by curling the fingers of your right hand around the rotor mast in the direction of rotation. Using this method, American helicopters are thumbs up, European helicopters are thumbs down. Sorry, Europe. Helicopters commonly have one or two engines and rarely three or more. You can tell by the number of tailpipes coming out the back of the airframe. They can be powered by piston engines, like the engine in your car, and run on aviation gasoline, aka avgas, or turbine engines, which are like the jet engines that power big airliners. Avgas is just like the gasoline you buy in your car, except it contains a small amount of lead and is 100 octane. Jet fuel is a light fuel oil, similar to diesel fuel. The most common type used is Jet A. Fuel prices vary from airport to airport and day to day, just like gasoline prices. But as of the making of this video, Avgas is about $5 a gallon, jet fuel is about $4 a gallon. The main rotor blades spin around the rotor mast. The entire helicopter hangs from the rotor mast. Some helicopters have a stationary mast with a separate drive shaft inside, but many use a spinning rotor mast that doubles as the structural component and the drive shaft. The rotor blades are attached to the rotor mast with a single nut called the mast nut, but often called the Jesus nut because you pray to Jesus that it doesn't come off. The mass nut is torqued to a large value of foot-pounds using an extremely long wrench. No, not that kind. There you go. Helicopters typically cruise between 90 and 190 miles per hour, but we measure this airspeed in nautical miles per hour, also known as knots. A nautical mile is 1.15 statute miles. Helicopters typically have about two to four hours of fuel on board, which, if you cruise in a straight line, and depending on how fast the helicopter is, can get you anywhere from 200 to about 500 miles before you had to refuel. Helicopters can be on skids or wheeled landing gear. The larger helicopters are on wheels for easier ground handling. A lot of people ask how we move the skid gear ships around. We use ground handling wheels or electric tugs. Or land the helicopter on landing carts. 
Helicopters are classified by their max gross weight, which is found in the pilot's operating handbook, or POH. This is the absolute heaviest the helicopter can be with max payload, passengers, and fuel. Based off this gross weight, helicopters are classified as either light, medium, super medium, or heavy. Light helicopters typically seat about two to six people. Medium helicopters can seat up to 12, and the larger super medium helicopters can seat up to 20. Heavy helicopters can seat quite a few more than that. As a very inaccurate rule of thumb, helicopters can typically lift about half their max gross weight. So if a helicopter has a max gross weight of 3,000 pounds, that means that its useful load is roughly 1,500. Most helicopters' actual useful load is probably slightly less than that due to the way that they're equipped, unless it's a heavy lift helicopter that's been deliberately stripped down. If you want to know how much the heaviest helicopters can lift, just do a Google search for these models. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are also unconventional helicopter designs which do not use a tail rotor. These include the Chinook and the MD Helicopter's no tire system and other designs that use coaxial or intermeshing rotor systems. A common question we get is what happens if the engine fails? Fortunately, if the engine fails in flight, a helicopter can still make a safe landing to the ground. The maneuver is called an auto-rotation and it's something the pilots practice all the time. In normal flight, the air flows downward through the rotor system, but in an auto-rotation, the air flows upward and actually drives the rotor system, keeping it spinning. This allows the pilot to control the descent to an extent. The helicopter descends rapidly, but this descent can be controlled by the pilot. And, if done properly, a helicopter can be landed without engine power just as softly as it can be landed with engine power. Helicopters are made all over the world. Common manufacturers include Robinson, Bell, Airbus, and others. That's it for this video. As we said, this was just the basics. Next video, we're going to cover helicopter aerodynamics, so be sure to hit that subscribe. Now for a quick review.